Which animals do you like more, pigeons or rabbits? When you live in a city, you probably see many pigeons, which is the species that adapts better in an environment shaped by tall stone buildings and fully paved and unnatural areas. Rabbits, however, enter the urban environment only when nature is being integrated. In this video, we will explain you all about the potential of re reintroducing nature in cities, metropolitan areas and urban regions through nature-based design solutions. Nature-based solutions, as a concept, it's basically what the words imply. Design solutions based on natural principles. Nature-based solutions aim to help societies address a variety of environmental, social and economic challenges in a sustainable way. They are actions inspired by or supported by nature. Nature-based solutions use and enhance existing na natural processes. In principle, an example of nature-based solution could, for instance, already be planting a tree instead of not planting a tree. It all depends on the target and what part of the natural system it involves. Often the features and processes of nature being operationalized are more complex, such as its ability to manage flood risk, to sanitate water or to sequestrate carbon. Examples of nature-based solutions can even be the mimicking of how non-human organisms and communities cope with environmental extremes. But the concept of nature-based solutions is so much broader. To better understand the advantages of nature-based solutions, it is important to look at the evolution of the terminology. An exact orange of this terminology is difficult to point out, but let me start by showing you two remarkable projects by American landscape infrastructure designer Frederick Lowe Olmsted. Central Park in New York City from uh, 1858 and the Emerald Necklace in Boston from 1878. Both projects managed to deliver benefits to the city from an environmental and water management point of view, but at the same time, they contribute socially by allowing a different form of experience and movement through the city, a slow one, surrounded by greenery and fresh air, connecting cultural institutions and communities. Decades later, in the 1969, Scottish landscape architect and professor at the University of Pennsylvania, Ian McCarg, claimed for an ecological view in design in which a designer should become familiar with a site through analysis of various layers of the landscape, like its soil and geological stratum, landform, the climate, hydrology, and so on. This in, in order to address the externalities to modern development by designing the future occupation most suitable to the caring capacity of the natural environment. McCarg's student and later successor, James Corner, noted that we should not only look at nature from its physical point of view, but to see nature also as a cultural phenomenon. In his writings, the cultural and societal dimension is equally important as the physical dimension in terms of the suitability of nature for the land uses. This means that we must consider to what extent the natural environment is able to host and sustain certain types of usage, but also what are the societal needs and demands. These theories manifest themselves in practice as green and blue infrastructures. With infrastructure in the context of green and blue and nature-based solutions, we mean the elements that provide services for life and the base conditions for a particular function. These infrastructures can either be a network but are not by default connected. They can also be a space dealing with processes in nature, decentralized from the system. Green and blue infrastructures in this way, in this sense, are alternatives for fully human built gray inf infrastructures by using design and engineered nature for the management of flows. The beauty of operationalizing nature in such a way is that nature is multifunction and besides delivering the same performance as grey infrastructures deliver, they can also contribute in many more ways. Think about poly uh, pollination, aesthetics, improving both physical and mental health, facilitating social cohesion, providing natural materials or even jobs as nature requires maintenance. These added values 
bring us to the term nature-based solutions, which capitalizes the full potential of nature, and in this is what makes so comprehensive. Nature-based solutions do not only deliver the performance from a functional and environmental point of view, but also include the potential benefits for the society and the economy. In this way, nature-based solutions brings together the three elements of sustainability, environment, economy and society, through the design of structures which are based on natural processes. So then how come nature-based solutions are still not established standard? This is mainly a financial issue and a matter of change in mindset. At the moment, investments are always made based on cost-benefit analysis. This means to look into how costs can continually be reduced while aiming to increase efficiency, benefits and proof of successful delivery and operation of systems which are being put in place with the minimum amount of risk possible. It is mainly for this reason that most infrastructures are still conceived in a traditional monofunctional way, which has the proof from an engineering and financial point of view that they function with low risk. As interventions based on natural processes are relatively new, we do not yet have uh, sufficient models to check the performance of nature-based solution systems. After much investment in studies of how nature works and how it benefits all people, we have now reached the moment where it's proven that the benefits of nature-based solutions instead of multifunctional interventions are higher on the long term and we can now use this knowledge to, to turn challenges into actions for a sustainable growth. These benefits do not only imply long-term risk management, flexibility of systems and the security of investments, but also livability, health, amenities and so on. The big differences is the multifunctionality and the temporal dimension. In the case of a solution based on nature, we need to wait for its succession and seasonal cycles after planting in order to be able to harvest the full range of various benefits. Although nature-based solutions are, are, are bioengineered systems, they are still based on open soil, vegetation, surface water with less control as a monofunctional engineered solution. In order to be able to change practice and move towards investments that are sensitive to long-term environmental and societal needs, we need to change the mentality of having the economy lead our decision making. Switching to nature-based solutions requires to embrace and accept higher initial investments and a certain marg margin of capital risk and to look into the full range of benefits through time instead of only direct benefits. This asks for the certainty that nature-based solutions can deliver the same functionality as traditional solutions and that they, their benefits will actually prevail. A very important step in this is the mon monetization of natural-based solutions, which means the assigning of money value in the implementation of nature-based solutions as a strong leverage point in future scoping, decision-making and design for the built environment.